Come back to this course. In the previous session, we have seen how we can control GPIO pin for reading as well as writing the digital logic. For that, we have created a sample project using CubeMX so that you get an idea that how we can proceed with other peripherals and write our user code. Now, in this session, we will see the MCU clocking system. For that, just go to the reference manual and look for the contents about reset and clock control, the RCC peripheral. If you remember, while configuring the GPIO, we have enabled the RCC as bypass clock source. I'll explain what is bypass clock source and why we have enabled it later in this session. Clocks are important component of a microcontroller because without clock, nothing will work. Since microcontroller is a digital circuitry that is synchronous in nature. Now synchronous with respect to what? With respect to clock. So without clock, the synchronization won't be there and controller will not work at all. So what do you mean by clock? Clock is nothing but a square wave signal of certain frequency. Now selecting appropriate clock for a dedicated application is very much important. Like if you are dedicating to low power domain application, then selecting the lower frequency crystal is very much critical because the power consumption is dependent on the MCU frequency. So if you scroll down in this reference manual, you will find the section for clock. It says there are three different clock sources that can be used to drive the system clock. So don't worry about the system clock. I'll explain it later. But for now, there are three clock sources that can be used to drive the system clock. The very first is HSI oscillator clock. HSI stands for high speed internal. So internal means that it is embedded within the MCU. So it's kind of an RC oscillator. In today's world, modern controllers are manufactured with RC oscillator inside the chip itself. In case of HSI oscillator, we don't need to connect the crystal source externally or the clock. We don't need to connect the clock externally. And this is very important in the application where we are dedicated to low power and low cost devices. Next is HSE oscillator clock. HSE stands for high speed external. Now external clock sources can be given using crystal oscillator. Now what is crystal oscillator? It's an external electronic component that provide square wave signal to the MCU. By external, I mean is we have to connect the crystal to MCU at specified pins. Next is PLL. PLL stand for phase lock loop. It's an internal machinery of an MCU that generates a higher frequency output taking low frequency input that is used to generate a high frequency clock output taking a low frequency clock input. How this PLL perform its task? I'll explain it later. Now next is it says that devices have two following secondary clock sources. The three that I have just discussed are the primary clock sources and other are known as secondary clock sources. So the STM32F401RE board have two following secondary clock sources. Number one is 32 kilohertz low speed internal RC oscillator. That means this is embedded within the chip itself, which drives the independent watchdog and optionally the RTC used for auto wake up. Just don't pay attention to these words. We'll explain it while we will be discussing that particular peripheral. And next is 32.768 kilohertz low speed external that is LSE crystal. So as I said about HSI and HSE, similarly the device is embedded with LSI and LSE. LSE stand for external crystal that is 32.768 kilohertz and LSI stand for RC oscillator that is embedded within the chip itself. Each clock sources can be switched on or off independently when not in use. Okay, so if we go further scrolling down, we'll find clock tree. 
if you see this clock tree it looks very complex but i'll try my level best to make it simplified for you in order to understand the clock tree it's better to go and open stm32 cubemx because as you remember in the previous session while we have configured the gpio and the clock source there is a tab called clock configuration tab and that embed the same clock tree as mentioned in this manual so let's open the cubemx now go to access to board selector type the name of our target board that is nucleo f401re so this is our target board click on start project click yes to initialize all the peripherals in default mode so this is the pinout tab just don't make any change come to clock configuration tab so if you see this tab carefully you will realize that this clock tree is exactly a replica of this clock tree that is explained in this reference manual okay so if you have a look that there are three sources of clock as mentioned in the manual that is hsi and if you traverse the path then hsi is coming from hsi rz oscillator that is the oscillator embedded in the chip itself now the maximum frequency of this rc oscillator is 16 megahertz next is hse that is high speed external and if you traverse this then this is connected to two pins and by this the external frequency can be connected that means an external crystal can be connected to these pins and supply the clock source externally 1 to 50 megahertz next is pll clock so as you can see the pll clock takes the source as hsi or hse divide and multiply with certain numbers called as prescalar multiplier in order to generate a dedicated frequency required for system clock or the hardware clock okay now all these three clock sources are connected to a system clock multiplexer so that only one clock source at a time can be selected to drive the system clock now what is system clock system clock is the main clock of mcu and by this system clock we can drive the clocks for other peripherals as well as external circuitry if you are confused let me give you a beautiful analogy for this and the concept will be more clear suppose there is a company let's say xyz so it has a source of income from these three sources number one is investor which are external to the company those who invest money on this company next is sales that company generate money from its sales sales is an internal department of a company and third one is money multiplier let's say company has a plan in which money is spent and multiplied to give it a higher amount of money and the money that it gets from these three sources get spent over the department like r d in giving salary to the employees somewhere in charity and etc so if you understand this circuitry you will realize the clock circuitry of stm32 mcu are how much identical so these blocks can be replaced by system clock hse hsi pll clock and this system clock drives hclk peripheral one clock peripheral two clock and functional clock i hope the idea is now clear now when the controller is reset it select by default the internal source that means by default the internal clock source that is rz oscillator is selected and once the controller reset then we can configure any other clock source whether it is hse or phase lock loop now what is the difference between hse and hsi hse is the external component so it's more accurate and the accuracy of this crystal doesn't vary with the temperature and other factors whereas in hsi the accuracy can be drifted due to temperature or other factor now as you can see the highlighted text box such as hclk or these 
fields for the peripheral clock can be edited that means these fields are editable now suppose i would like to run my mcu at 8 megahertz so just i will enter 8 and hit enter and qms will automatically configure the prescaler to get the desired clock frequency now suppose i have selected pll clock and i want to use 16 megahertz frequency to run the mcu so if i enter 16 and hit enter thus clock tree will automatically resolve all the prescaler and multiplier divider in order to get the desired frequency now the question is how accurate this frequency is that okay i have configured 16 megahertz then what's the guarantee that this configuration is perfect or the mcu is running at 16 megahertz exactly so st offer you an options to measure the clock output as you can see here there is two sources one is mco2 one is mco1 that is master clock output one master clock output two right now these are disabled because we have not enabled it in the configuration tab so let's go to configuration tab go to a to z select rcc and you will see master clock output one two and audio clock input so if you select master clock output one you will see that a pin is configured for mco1 which is pa8 now if you save this project and generate code and once you run the code you can measure the output frequency from this pin now you can configure the output for mco1 because it is now enabled so if you want to measure hsi okay hsi you want to measure then you can select hsi and it is giving the output divided by 1 so that is 16 so hsi is 16 megahertz so if you want to measure the hsi it will give you 16 megahertz output now if you want to measure hse so you have to enable first hse now it is 8 megahertz because here it is 8 megahertz similarly if you want to use lse then you have to enable the lse which is 32.768 kilohertz so it is giving the value but you can use a cro or usb logic analyzer to get the output frequency okay now come to the configuration that why we have enabled hse as bypass clock source and why not crystal ceramic resonator so if you open the target board figure you will see there are two crystal oscillator one is here one is here so this portion is the st link debugger that means this particular ic which is used to program the main mcu also runs with the help of clock and this is the clock connected to this debugger ic and having the frequency 8 megahertz now this is the mcu also 8 megahertz is connected to main mcu but in various boards you won't find a crystal oscillator available here just to reduce the cost so in some nuclear boards you won't find a crystal source connected here therefore you need to work with internal oscillator now as i already explained why we prefer external because it is more accurate and stable so since in some nuclear boards there is no any external clock for the main mcu so what we do is we bypass this crystal source through the debugger ic to the main mcu that means the main mcu is using the crystal of debugger ic through bypass clock source so that's why when i enable the bypass clock source you will see the clock configuration 8 megahertz frequency is configured as hse now you can select as per your desired frequency i always try to run on 84 megahertz that is the maximum frequency because it's just a training we don't bother about the low power consumption or low cost application because we are not in the developing phase i hope the mcu clocking system is very much clear to you in the next session we'll discuss about this st link debugger that what are the features of this st link that's all for this session see you in the next one thank you